My name is Jason Beard and I want to thank you for joining us again for another edition of Beard Creations. And today we're going to talk about hoop nets and wire nets and how we rig them here. We're in North Louisiana. It's the end of January and we're about a month away from hitting the water for us with these nets just because we've got things going on. But mainly when you fish these types of nets and you're looking for current and I'm just going to quickly show you the way we rig them and I, I know there's other ways to do this and no we are not professionals we don't do this for a living we do this to feed ourselves and some other people around us family and uh, anyway let me show you what we do we're going to start with the, the wire nets so we've got these wire nets here we've already repaired everything we've already dipped them they've dipped been dipped and dried and now we've we've got the ropes back on them and going to show you what we do and what i've got right here because when you you know if you run wire nets that you you know yeah the fish come out this end so to make it easy and quick we just put this carabiner on here and put this bungee so that it's tight and the end is tight and and it makes it much easier when you're out in the water so you're not untying the rope and such and uh so anyway but let's start at the, the tail end here. I'm just gonna show you on this one. What we do is I've got a carabiner here attached to the wire net, okay? So that when you're 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 headed to the water or you're you know pulling them up to go home and you're gonna you know, you're pulling them that day, uh, all your ropes tied to your anchors are out there. And then I've got a just a heavy duty washer here tied into the rope to the anchor. And, and so all you do is clip it back in when you drop your anchor and then you, you come up here, come up to the front, to the head. And I've got the, basically the same thing on this end, except on this end, I have a swivel. I've got a 5 16 swivel uh, eye to eye swivel and again a carabiner on hooked to the trap so that uh, this is hooked to the the weight and so all you do is clip it in or clip it out depending on what you're doing and so if you're new to this what you're going to do is you're going to drop your weight on the tail end and this end always goes down current always goes down because those fish are swimming up current generally and so you put your, your, your closed in up current. So you drop your anchor and you come out and you drop your, your net and you're holding you know, your, your head end and you're coming out in your boat and then you're gonna drop your weight on that end. So basically, that's how we rig those. And basically it's the same thing on our hoop nets. And right here I've got a four foot and then I've got uh, five three footers and two and, two and a half footers. And, here in Louisiana, you can run on, on just your regular um, net, your wire net license. You can run five wire nets and you can run five hoop nets on a hoop net license. So if you've got a commercial, it's different, but here you can run five and you say, well, you've got more than five. I do because in certain places that you put, come walk with me. I just want to show in certain places, you'll see how, how much shorter this net is than that four foot down at the end. So if you're in backwater and you know the water's not, sometimes it's not that deep, but the catfish are there. And so you can't run a big net because of the other boats and things. So sometimes the smaller nets are necessary, but uh, I actually prefer the bigger nets, the three and four footers. And uh, I'm just gonna show you again what we do. So it's basically the same thing. So what I've got here is again, I've got a, a carabiner into a swivel, 5 16 swivel. And you say, what size ropes are you using? I, I mainly use what I got, but uh, I, I, I'm gonna show you down here. I bought this rope. I bought this one from a net company just to use for the some of the anchors on the front side. And this is a number six, it was 640 feet. And this here is 3 8 rope uh it was 600 feet as well i actually ordered this online i think i paid about 50 dollars for that 600 feet but i've got mine on a on a triple tied on on the throat three points on the throat some people use four 
And, you know, the main thing to do in, in, in hoop nets is they've got to be tight when they're stretched out. Because if they, they're all loose and, and in like, you know, that, the fish have a hard time getting in and you're just, you're just not going to catch the fish you should have caught. So your anchor's back there. And like I said, on the tail end, come down here again, Titus. Again, we've got the washer, heavy duty washer with the carabiner. And again, the reason I do that is I'm going to show you real quick. So if we're out in the water and we head it home, all I do is unclip that and I'm pulling it in the boat. I'm going to unclip this in. And just like that, it's hung up because it's on that other net. It's going to come down to that in the boat. And it's not taking up much room. And so on my anchor, it's going to come down here. I'm going to pull it in and I'm going to wrap it around the anchor and I'm going to put it in the back of the boat and it's not taking up much room. So it's all about what works for you, for us, this is what works. But some people, you know, they you look in the throat, so you've got a front throat and then the back throat. If you've only got one throat in there, it's not doing any good. So what happens is the fish comes in, comes to the front throat. And back here behind the second is where your bait is, right inside of here. Some people, they tie it up back here. I prefer mine up closer to the throat so the fish will come in and come back to it. And when the fish comes through, he's generally not going to find his way back out of that little hole down there. But if they're smaller fish, they'll get through these, these holes here. And when you pull it up, your fish will be in this part of the net right here. Now, if you'll notice, some of the throats they come down to a to a point and some people they prefer that you uh the net you know the point of it the inside throat if it's coming to a point you know where the fish is swimming through and the throat's coming down some of the fishermen we like you know to be vertical or horizontal depending on what you're doing but to me, it doesn't make that big of a deal, but if you're one of those that wants your second throat to be vertical, then all you have to do is figure where the vertical is and tie you some weights on each hoop right here, here, on, every, on all seven of the hoops so that when you drop it in the water, that weight will go down and it will be on the bottom and then your second throat would be vertical. And again, for me, you know, we fish in backwaters. We're, we're fishing, we're not trying to, we're not commercial fishing with this. We're just trying to fill our freezers up. And so, but this is what we do. We make it very easy, quick. I like the, the part of the rigging of being quick and easy. And so you, you unclip, or if you're out in the water, you know, you drop your tail, you anchor, you drop it out and you clip it and you keep going. And uh, you know, some people would ask why the swivel? Well, I had an old fisherman tell me one time that if you're fishing really heavy current, what happens is your tail end is, is, is tight, right? So the net itself is sitting still. But yet on this end, I've got just a, some of them are two and a half, some of them five pound weight. Some of them are a pieces of chain that I had, just something to hold the net open. But let me tell you what happens. In current, if you're fishing in current, the current will keep the net open on its own. But if you're fishing in slow current, you need a wet on the uh, weight on the other end. But what happens is if, if you're in heavy current, you're in a big river and the current's moving and it's coming through, sometimes it will catch that, that, that weight on that end and it will begin to spin. And if you're not careful, it will twist this, this rope up here and you'll have a problem. But what happens is the swivel takes all that out. So if there is any movement on the on the anchor, on the, not anchor, but on the, the weight end from the head, it'll just spin and it leaves your net and it doesn't get it in a bind. And so this is what we do. Some people ask how much rope to put on your anchor side or your weight side. And it just depends on you and where you're fishing. I, I rig some of mine up short because some people like to tie them upside down. And depending on where you're fishing and what you're doing, you may you may suspend it upside down and you won't need much rope. So, but if you're fishing in big current, I like more rope. I like you know, 100 foot on one end or more 
uh, because when you go to find it, it if you the more rope you have, the easier it is to get in the window of where your setup is. So sometimes, you know, water rises or falls and everything looks different when you get there. And so everybody's different, so just whatever works for you. And we're excited, season is getting close for us to, to get back and the, the, the catfish will be spawning here in Louisiana here in another month, month and a half, two months. And we're excited. So I just want to thank you for joining us today for another edition of Beard Creations. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And uh, I just want to tell you, be blessed. May the Lord of glory do amazing in your life. Thanks for joining us today. And may your nets be full.